Hi, I'm Pete Scargill, and today we're going to take a brief look at the uh, ESP8266, and in particular uh, the ESP03 um, module, and I'm going to talk around that and some of the stuff I've been doing with it. So, welcome to the uh, workshop. Uh, as you can see, I have a, a number of the little uh, ESP uh, 01s here. I've just uh, had some of those delivered. And I have had a certain measure of success with them. If you've been reading my blog, um, and that's detailed on the link, you'll know that I've, um, I've been checking out all the various firmware alternatives. Uh, I even have here a prototype from um, a company of a little prototyping board for the ESP or ones uh, and in fact just today I've sent off to China for um, a little um, board to make it easier to work with these with a decent 3 volt regulator and level shifter and again that, that'll that pop up uh, that's not commercial right now um, but what I'd like to show you today is the ESP03 okay is this little module uh, here you can see the standard two chips on these boards and it's got uh, edge counter and I've put on a piece of prototyping board with some uh, lights and um, a three volt again a three volt regulator okay so what's wrong with the little O1 boards well for reasons beyond most of us they chose just to bring out a few of the connections um, I'm sure they thought that everybody was just going to stick this onto a microprocessor and that was going to be the end of it. But, of course, a lot of people have been getting inventive and we have uh, at least one implementation of a language called Lua, which um, promises to, to let us do some simple applications within this board. Now, you're looking at a board here that costs you know a couple of pounds or so. Um, but because of the limitation of the number of pins that they brought out on the board, um, they've, all, they've only brought out two general purpose I.O. lines and one of them you uh, mustn't hold to ground because it also doubles up uh, for programming. So I thought I'd order one of the O3s. This is slightly different to the O1 in that it has a ceramic um, aerial, built-in aerial. Um, they're about, I think about £3.50, something like that. Um, and I thought I'd give it a shot. Now, if you look at the if you look at the diagram that's coming up, uh, you'll see that it looks like it has a lot of I/O pins. But as I'm going through it, um, it's not that simple. Uh, I've actually managed to get four working I/O pins. I could get five if if I want to chance problems on reset with this line that needs to be used needs to be reserved for uh, programming mode. But let let me show you this uh, in operation. So I put this together. Um, I've put the Lua software in, so there's no microprocessor here other than the one on the Wi-Fi board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my standard programming lead, plug it in, and all I'm really doing here is getting some power for the board. And I'm going to plug it into the board. A couple of seconds, that will reset itself. And uh, and there you go. There's the there's the board sitting mine its own business on my mobile phone, and I have an application uh, that uses something called WebSockets, and that in fact will talk to this board. So I don't know how well you can see that there. I've got four on off buttons and four lights. Now as this is sitting here now, what's happening is every couple of hundred milliseconds is actually talking to the board over the Wi-Fi. Um, and polling so that the status of those outputs uh, you're seeing uh, in real time. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to turn uh, lights on. We're going to turn them off, and we're going to see the real time status on the right here. And we're going to actually see what happens there. So as I turn the first light on, the blue light comes on on the board. Uh, a rather pathetic amber light on the board. A red light and a green light and uh, if I just bring that up close you'll see the four lights are actually on on the board there so if I turn them all off and leave one on switch the phone app off switch the phone app on again I 
back and turn my lights on and off. So that works. That works fairly reliably. Um, I have to say, I still think the AT soft software with a separate processor is more reliable. Uh, that's just gone AWOL there, but it's come back. So I'd be quite happy to leave this running, controlling a relay or something, and controlling the lighting of my house, and uh, be able to turn it on and off. So that, that that that's great. So so how did I, I get to here? Well, in the board itself, there is what they call the Lua in, interpreter. You can get the binary file for that and just download it to uh, the board. Um, put a little bit of code in there. Um, you do that with a serial terminal, and I've written a serial terminal for Windows users uh, because I got sick of what was out there. Um, so that's quite easy. And uh, this, the program on here is a program called NetIO. You, if you just look up NetIO on the web, um, it's available for Android and uh, iOS. Uh, and that's fairly simple. Um, and so there you are. I mean, okay, I've got a load of stuff around this, but basically you're talking about a two pound odd board, which works on Wi-Fi. And I have to say it's as sensitive um, as my routers. So I'd be quite happy to put this anywhere in the building powered up and I would expect it to uh, to just work. So the other way of doing this of course is to use something like an Arduino and and use the the uh, AT command set which again if you look at the blog you'll find out all the information about it. This is a little board that we developed ourselves. Um, it's a partly built one but it'll it'll show the general idea. So we've got a an AT Mega 1284 which is just like um, the, the normal um, chip used in Arduinos, but with four times as much flash, four times as much memory, etc. Crystal connectors, two regulators. Now you'll notice on here that we've got a decent size little uh, regulators. There's a five volt and a three volt three. You'll find some of the boards have regulators on them. Uh, can't find one here, but if you look at your um, if you look at uh, some of the Arduinos that do have three uh, volts, they have tiny, tiny little regulators. They're not enough. These things can take up to a quarter of an amp. So that's 250 milliamps. So you really want um, a regulator that will deliver at least maybe, say, half an amp at 3.3 volts. Uh, so uh, all the designs that we do, we put a, we put a decent size um, regulator on there. So, so there it is. Um, that's my prototype. Um, I would say in the last week, there are two promising lines of software development. One would be the um, original expressive EAT software, and the other one would be the Lua interpreter. And they're all detailed um, in the blog. Right. Well, thanks for watching.